chapters seventy one through eighty of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seventy one vignette the deceased kneeling with both hands raised in adoration before the goddess maert the legend reads the homage of the scribe nepseni to the goddess maert lady of heaven and mistress of earth elsewhere the deceased is seen adoring ra in the presence of thoth and osiris text the chapter of coming forth by day the libationer the lord of reverence nepseni saith hail thou hawk who risest in heaven thou lord of the goddess maert strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon the earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me i am the hawk which is within the shrine and i open that which is upon the hangings thereof behold horus the son of isis behold horus the son of isis strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me i am the hawk in the southern heaven and i am thoth in the northern heaven i make peace with the raging fire and i bring maat to him that loveth her behold thoth even thoth strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me i am the plant of the region where nothing sprouteth and the blossom of the hidden horizon behold osiris yea osiris strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me hail thou who standest upon thy legs in thine hour or as others say hail thou who art victorious upon thy legs in thine hour thou lord of the two divine tchafi who livest in the two divine tchafi strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me hail thou nekan who art in thine egg thou lord of the goddess maert strengthen thou me according as thou hast strengthened thyself and show thyself upon earth o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me the god sepek hath stood up within his ground and the goddess neith hath stood up within her plantation o thou that returnest and withdrawest thyself show thyself upon earth and let thy will be done behold the god of one face is with me hail ye seven beings who make decrees who support the scales on the night of the judgment of the utchat who cut off heads who hack necks in pieces who take possession of hearts by violence and rend the places where hearts are fixed who make slaughterings in the lake of fire i know you and i know your names therefore know ye me even as i know your names i come forth to you therefore come ye forth to me for ye live in me and i would live in you make ye me to be vigorous by means of that which is in your hands that is to say by the rod of power which is in your hands decree ye for me life by your speech year by year give me multitudes of years over and above my years of life and multitudes of months over and above my months of life and multitudes of days over and above my days of life and multitudes of nights over and above my nights of life and grant that i may come forth and shine upon my statue and grant me air for my nose and let my eyes have the power to see among those divine beings who dwell in the horizon on the day when evil-doing and wrong are justly assessed 
rubric if this chapter be recited for the deceased he shall be strong upon earth before ra and he shall have a comfortable burial or tomb with osiris and it shall be of great benefit to a man in the underworld sepulchral bread shall be given unto him and he shall come forth into the presence of ra day by day and every day regularly and continually chapter seventy two vignette the deceased standing and holding a staff in his left hand text the chapter of coming forth by day and of opening up a way through the amahet behold the scribe nebseni triumphant who saith homage to you o ye lords of kaz ye who are without sin and who live for the limitless and infinite eons of time which make up eternity i have opened up a way for myself to you i have become a coup in my forms i have gained the mastery over my enchantments and i am decreed to be a coup therefore deliver ye me from the crocodile which liveth in this country of right and truth grant ye to me my mouth that i may speak therewith and cause that my sepulchral meals be placed in my hands in your presence for i know you and i know your names and i know also the name of the mighty god before whose nose ye set your techafau food and the name is tekum when he openeth up his path in the eastern horizon of heaven and when he fluttereth down in the western horizon of heaven may he carry me along with him and may i be safe and sound let not the mesket make an end of me let not the fiend gain the mastery over me let me not be turned back at your portals and let not your doors be shut in my face because my cakes are in the city of pei and my ale is in the city of tep and there in the celestial mansions of heaven which my divine father tem hath established let my hands lay hold upon the wheat and the barley which shall be given unto me therein in abundant measure and may the son of mine own body make ready for me my food therein and grant ye unto me therein sepulchral meals and incense and wax and all the beautiful and pure things whereon the god liveth in very deed for ever in all the transformations which it pleaseth me to perform and grant me the power to float down and to sail up the stream in seket aru and may i reach seket hetep i am the double lion god rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased upon earth or if it be done in writing upon his coffin he shall come forth by day in all the forms which he is pleased to take and he shall enter into his place and shall not be driven back and cakes and ale and joints of meat upon the altar of osiris shall be given unto him and he shall enter in peace into seket aru to know the decree of him who dwelleth in tatu there shall wheat and barley be given unto him there shall he flourish as he did upon earth and he shall do whatever it pleaseth him to do even as the company of the gods which is in the underworld continually and regularly for millions of times chapter seventy three this chapter is given twice in the turin papyrus once with a vignette and once without the vignette in the theban recension is quite different from that in the saite recension where the deceased is seen standing and holding a staff in his left hand chapter seventy four vignette the deceased kneeling with both hands raised in adoration before the sucker boat placed upon its sledge in the saite recension the deceased is standing near a two-legged serpent text the chapter of lifting up the feet and of coming forth upon the earth the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant saith perform thy work o seker before my work o seker o thou who dwellest in thy house and who standest on thy feet in the underworld i am the god who sendeth forth rays of light over the thigh of heaven and i come forth to heaven and i sit myself down by the god of light ku hail i have become helpless hail i have become helpless but i go forward i have become helpless i have become helpless in the regions of those who plunder in the underworld 
chapter seventy five vignette in the saite recension the deceased is standing before the emblem of anu heliopolis text the chapter of journeying to anu heliopolis and of receiving a throne therein the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant saith i have come forth from the uttermost parts of the earth and i have received my apparel at the will of the ape i penetrate into the holy habitations of those who are in their shrines or coffins i force my way through the habitations of the god remrem and i arrive in the habitations of the god Akhsesef. i travel on through the holy chambers and i pass into the temple of the god Kemkem. the buckle hath been given unto me it hath placed its hands upon me it hath decreed to my service its sister kebent and its mother Kehet, it placeth me in the eastern part of heaven wherein ra riseth and is exalted every day and i rise therein and travel onward and i become a spiritual body sa like the god and they set me on that holy way on which thoth journeyeth when he goeth to make peace between the two fighting gods that is horus and set he journeyeth he journeyeth to the city of pe and he cometh to the city of tepu chapter seventy six vignette this chapter is without a vignette in the theban recension but in the saite recension a figure of the deceased is given above the chapter text the chapter of a man transforming himself into whatever form he pleaseth the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i have come into the house of the king by means of the mantis abit which led me hither homage to thee o thou who fliest into heaven and dost shine upon the sun of the white crown and dost protect the white crown let me have my existence with thee i have gathered together the great gods i am mighty i have made my way and i have travelled along thereon chapter seventy seven vignette a golden hawk holding a flail emblematic of rule text the chapter of performing the transformation into a hawk of gold the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i have risen i have risen like the mighty hawk of gold that cometh forth from his egg i fly and i alight like the hawk which hath a back four cubits wide and the wings of which are like unto the mother of emerald of the south i have come forth from the interior of the sectet boat and my heart hath been brought unto me from the mountain of the east i have alighted upon the atet boat and those who were dwelling in their companies have been brought unto me and they bowed low in paying homage unto me and in saluting me with cries of joy i have risen and i have gathered myself together like the beautiful hawk of gold which hath the head of a benu bird and ra entereth in day by day to hearken unto my words i have taken my seat among those first-born gods of nut i am established and the divine sekhet hetep is before me i have eaten therein i have become a khu therein i have an abundance therein as much as i desire the god nephra hath given to me my throat and i have gained the mastery over that which guardeth or belongeth to my head chapter seventy eight vignette a hawk painted green holding a flail and standing upon a pylon shaped pedestal text the chapter of making the transformation into a divine hawk the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail great god come now to tatu make thou smooth for me the ways and let me go round about to visit my thrones i have renewed myself and i have raised myself up o grant thou that i may be feared and make thou me to be a terror let the gods of the underworld be afraid of me and may they fight for me in their habitations which are therein let not him that would do me harm draw nigh unto me or injure me in the house of darkness that is he that clotheth and covereth the feeble one and whose name is hidden and let not the gods act likewise towards me hail ye gods who hearken unto my speech hail ye rulers who are among the followers of osiris be ye therefore silent o ye gods when one god speaketh unto another for he hearkeneth unto right and truth and what i speak unto him 
do thou also speak for me then o osiris grant thou that i may journey round about according to that which cometh forth from thy mouth concerning me and grant that i may see thine own form or forms and the dispositions of thy souls grant thou that i may come forth and that i may have power over my legs and that i may have my existence there like unto that of neber tcher who is over all may the gods of the underworld fear me and may they fight for me in their habitations grant thou that i may move along therein together with the divine beings who journey onwards and may i be established upon my resting-place like the lord of life may i be joined unto isis the divine lady and may she protect me from him that would do an injury unto me and let not any one come to see the divine one naked and helpless may i journey on may i come into the uttermost parts of heaven i exchange speech with the god seb i make supplication for divine food from neber -etur. the gods of the underworld have fear of me and they fight for me in their habitations when they see that thou hast provided me with food both of the fowl of the air and of the fish of the sea i am one of those khus who dwell with the divine khu and i have made my form like unto his divine form when he cometh forth and maketh himself manifest in tatu i am a spiritual body saw and possess my soul and will speak unto thee the things which concern me o oh, grant thou that i may be feared and make thou me to be a terror let the gods of the underworld be afraid of me and may they fight for me in their habitations i even i am the khu who dwelleth with the divine khu whom the god tem himself hath created and who hath come into being from the blossom that is the eyelashes of his eye he hath made to have existence and he hath made to be glorious that is to be khus and he hath made mighty thereby those who have their existence along with him behold he is the only one in nu and they sing praises or do homage unto him when he cometh forth from the horizon and the gods and the khus who have come into being along with him ascribe the lordship of terror unto him i am one of those worms which the eye of the lord the only one hath created and behold when as yet isis had not given birth to horus i had germinated and had flourished and i had become aged and i had become greater than those who dwelt with the divine khu and who had come into being along with him and i had risen up like the divine hawk and horus made for me a spiritual body containing his own soul so that i might take possession of all that belonged unto osiris in the underworld the double lion god the governor of the things which belong to the temple of the nemes crown who dwelleth in his secret abode saith unto me get thee back to the uttermost parts of heaven for behold inasmuch as through thy form of horus thou hast become a spiritual body saw the nemes crown is not for thee but behold thou hast the power of speech even to the uttermost parts of heaven and i the guardian took possession of the things of horus which belonged unto osiris in the underworld and horus told aloud unto me the things which his divine father osiris spake unto him in years gone by on the day of his own burial i have given unto thee the nemes crown through the double lion god that thou mayest pass onward and mayest come to the heavenly path and that those who dwell in the uttermost parts of the horizon may see thee and that the gods of the underworld may see thee and may fight for thee in their habitations and of them is the auhet the gods each and all of them who are the warders of the shrine of the lord the only one have fallen before my words hail he that is exalted upon his tomb is on my side and he hath bound upon my head the nemes crown by the decree of the double lion god on my behalf and the god auhet hath prepared a way for me i even i am exalted in my tomb and the double lion god hath bound the nemes crown upon my head and he hath also given unto me the double hairy covering of my head he hath established my heart through his own backbone he hath established my heart through his own great and exceeding strength and i shall not fall through shu i make my peace with the beautiful divine brother the lord of the two 
uriah adored be he i even i am he who knoweth the roads through the sky and the wind thereof is in my body the bull which striketh terror into men shall not drive me back and i shall pass on to the place where lieth the shipwrecked mariner on the border of the sekhet nehe that is field of illimitable time and i shall journey on to the night and sorrow of the regions of amenti o osiris i shall come each day into the house of the double lion god and i shall come forth therefrom into the house of isis the divine lady i shall behold sacred things which are hidden and i shall be led on to the secret and holy things even as they have granted unto me to see the birth of the great god horus hath made me to be a spiritual body through his soul and i see what is therein if i speak near the mighty ones of shu they repulse my opportunity i am the guardian and i take possession of the things which horus had from osiris in the underworld i even i am horus who dwelleth in the divine khu i have gained power over his crown i have gained power over his radiance and i have travelled over the remote illimitable parts of heaven horus is upon his throne horus is upon his royal seat my face is like unto that of the divine hawk my strength is like unto that of the divine hawk and i am one who hath been fully equipped by his divine lord i shall come forth to tatu i shall see osiris i shall pay homage to him on the right hand and on the left i shall pay homage unto nut and she shall look upon me and the god shall look upon me together with the eye of horus who is without sight they the gods shall make their arms to come forth unto me i rise up as a divine power and i repulse him that would subject me to restraint they open unto me the holy paths they see my form and they hear that which i speak down upon your faces ye gods of the tuat underworld who would resist me with your faces and oppose me with your powers who lead along the stars which never rest and who make the holy paths unto the hamati abode where is the lord of the exceedingly mighty and terrible soul horus hath commanded that ye lift up your faces so that i may look upon you i have risen up like the divine hawk and horus hath made for me a spiritual body through his own soul to take possession of that which belongeth to osiris in the tuat underworld i have bound up the gods with divine tresses and i have travelled on to those who ward their chambers and who were on both sides of me i have made my roads and i have journeyed on and have reached those divine beings who inhabit their secret dwellings and who are warders of the temple of osiris i have spoken unto them with strength and have made them to know the most mighty power of him that is provided with two horns to fight against suti and i make them to know concerning him that hath taken possession of the divine food and who is provided with the might of ten may the gods of the underworld order a prosperous journey for me o ye gods who inhabit your secret dwellings and who are warders of the temple of osiris and whose numbers are great and multitudinous grant ye that i may come unto you i have bound up and i have gathered together the powers of kesemu ananet or as others say kesemu ananet and i have made holy the powers of the paths of those who watch and ward the roads of the horizon and who are the guardians of the horizon of humati which is in heaven i have established habitations for osiris i have made the ways holy for him i have done that which hath been commanded i have come forth to tatu i have seen osiris i have spoken unto him concerning the matters of his first-born son whom he loveth and concerning the wounding of the heart of suti and i have seen the divine one who is without life yea i have made them to know concerning the counsels of the gods which horus carried out while his father osiris was not with him hail lord thou most mighty and terrible soul verily i even i have come look thou upon me and do thou make me to be exalted i have made my way through the tuat underworld and i have opened up the paths which belong to heaven and also those which belong to earth and i have suffered no opposition therein exalted be thou upon thy throne o osiris thou hast heard fair things o osiris thy strength is vigorous o osiris thy head is fastened unto thee o osiris thy 
brow is stablished o osiris thy heart is glad o osiris thy speech is stablished o osiris and thy princes rejoice thou art stablished like the bull of amentet thy son horus hath risen like the sun upon thy throne and all life is with him millions of years minister unto him and millions of years hold him in fear the company of the gods are his servants and the company of the gods hold him in fear the god tem the governor and only one of the gods hath spoken these things and his word passeth not away horus is both the divine food and the sacrifice he hath passed on to gather together the members of his divine father horus is his deliverer horus is his deliverer horus hath sprung from the water of his divine father and from his decay he hath become the governor of egypt the gods labour for him and they toil for him for millions of years and he hath made to live millions of years through the, his eye the only one of its lord or nebes nebeter chapter seventy nine vignette the deceased kneeling in adoration before three gods text the chapter of being transformed into the governor of the sovereign princes the chancellor in chief nu triumphant saith i am the god tem the maker of heaven the creator of things which are who cometh forth from the earth who maketh to come into being the seed which is sown the lord of things which shall be who gave birth to the gods i am the great god who made himself the lord of life who maketh to flourish the company of the gods homage to you o ye lords of divine things or of creation ye pure beings whose abodes are hidden homage to you o ye everlasting lords whose forms are hidden and whose shrines are hidden in places which are unknown homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the tenait homage to you o ye gods of the circuit of the flooded lands of kebu homage to you o ye gods who live in amentet homage to you o ye company of the gods who dwell in nut grant ye that i may come unto you for i am pure i am divine i am a khu i am strong i am endowed with a soul or i am mighty and i have brought unto you incense and sweet-smelling gums and natron i have made an end of the spittle which floweth from your mouth upon me i have come and i have made an end of the evil things which are in your hearts and i have removed the faults which ye kept laid up against me i have brought to you the things which are good and i make to come into your presence right and truth i even i know you and i know your names and i know your forms which are unknown and i come into being along with you my coming is like unto that of the god who eateth men and who liveth upon the gods i am mighty with you like the god who is exalted upon his resting-place the gods come to me in gladness and goddesses make supplication unto me when they see me i have come unto you and i have risen like your two divine daughters i have taken my seat in the horizon and i receive my offerings upon my tables and i drink drink offerings at eventide my coming is received with shouts of joy and the divine beings who dwell in the horizon ascribe praises unto me the divine spiritual bodies saw the lord of divine beings i am exalted like the holy god who dwelleth in the great temple and the gods rejoice when they see me in my beautiful coming forth from the body of nut when my mother nut giveth birth unto me chapter eighty vignette a god with the disk of the sun upon his head text the chapter of making the transformation into the god who giveth light in the darkness saith osiris the scribe ani triumphant i am the girdle of the robe of the god nu which shineth and sheddeth light upon that which belongeth to his breast which sendeth forth light into the darkness which uniteth the two fighting deities who dwell in my body through the mighty spell of the words of my mouth which raiseth up him that hath fallen for he who was with him in the valley of abtu abadas hath fallen and i rest i have remembered him i have taken possession of the god hugh in my city for i found him therein and i have led away captive the darkness by my might i have rescued the eye of the sun when it waned at the coming of the festival of the fifteenth day and i have weighed sut in the celestial houses against the aged one who is with him i have endowed thoth with what is needful in the temple of the moon god for the coming of the fifteenth day of the festival i have taken possession of the uraret crown maat 
right and truth is in my body its mouths are of turquoise and rock crystal my homestead is among the furrows which are of the colour of lapis lazuli i am hemnu who sheddeth light in the darkness i have come to give light in the darkness which is made light and bright by me i have given light in the darkness and i have overthrown the destroying crocodiles i have sung praises unto those who dwell in the darkness i have raised up those who wept and who had hidden their faces and had sunk down in wretchedness and they did look then upon me hail then ye beings i am hem new and i will not let you hear concerning the matter i have opened the way i am hem new i have made light the darkness i have come having made an end of the darkness which have become light indeed end of chapters seventy one through eighty chapters eighty one through ninety of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eighty one a vignette in the papyrus of nepseni the vignette of this chapter is simply a lotus flower in full bloom but in the papyrus of ani a human head is seen springing from the lotus which is growing in a pool of water text the chapter of making the transformation into a lotus the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief nu saith i am the pure lotus which springeth up from the divine splendour that belongeth to the nostrils of ra i have made my way and i follow on seeking for him who is horus i am the pure one who cometh forth out of the field chapter eighty one b vignette a human head springing from a lotus text the chapter of making the transformation into a lotus saith osiris pakwer hail thou lotus thou type of the god nefer temu i am the man that knoweth you and i know your names among those of the gods the lords of the underworld and i am one of you grant ye that i may see the gods who are the divine guides in the tuat underworld and grant ye unto me a place in the underworld near unto the lords of amentet let me arrive at a habitation in the land of tchesert and receive me o all ye gods in the presence of the lords of eternity grant that my soul may come forth whithersoever it pleaseth and let it not be driven away from the presence of the great company of the gods chapter eighty two vignette the god ptah in a shrine before which is a table of offerings text the chapter of making the transformation into ptah of eating cakes and of drinking ale and of unfettering the steps and of becoming a living being in anu heliopolis the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant saith i fly like a hawk i cackle like the smen goose and i perch upon that abode of the underworld aat on the festival of the great being that which is an abomination unto me that which is an abomination unto me i have not eaten filth is an abomination unto me and i have not eaten thereof and that which is an abomination unto my ka hath not entered into my belly let me then live upon that which the gods and the khus decree for me let me live and let me have power over cakes let me eat them before the gods and the khus who have a favour unto me let me have power over these cakes and let me eat of them under the shade of the leaves of the palm-tree of the goddess hathor who is my divine lady let the offering of the sacrifice and the offering of cakes and vessels of libations be made in anu let me clothe myself in the ta owl garment which i shall receive from the hand of the goddess ta it let me stand up and let me sit down wheresoever i please my head is like unto that of ra and when my members are gathered together i am like unto tem the four sides of the domain of ra and the width of the earth four times i come forth my tongue is like unto that of ptah and my throne is like unto that of the goddess hathor and i make mention of the words of tem my father with my mouth he it is who constraineth the handmaid the wife of seb and before him are bowed all heads and there is fear of him hymns of praise are repeated for me by reason of my mighty acts 
and i am decreed to be the divine heir of seb the lord of the earth and to be the protector therein the god seb refresheth me and he maketh his risings to be mine those who dwell in anu bow down their heads unto me for i am their lord and i am their bull i am more powerful than the lord of time and i shall enjoy the pleasures of love and shall gain the mastery over millions of years chapter eighty three vignette a benu bird text the chapter of making the transformation into a benu bird the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i came into being from unformed matter i came into existence like the god capera i have germinated like the things which germinate that is plants and i have dressed myself like the tortoise i am of the germs of every god i am yesterday of the four quarters of the world and of those seven uriae which came into existence in amentet that is to say horus who emitteth light from his divine body he is the god who fought against suti but the god thoth cometh between them through the judgment of him that dwelleth in sekhem and of the souls who are in anu and there is a stream between them i have come by day and i have risen in the footsteps of the gods i am the god kensu who driveth back all that oppose him rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall come forth pure by day after his death and he shall perform whatsoever transformations his heart desireth he shall be in the following of un nefer and he shall be satisfied with the food of osiris and with sepulchral meals he shall see the disc he shall be in good case upon earth before ra and he shall be triumphant before osiris and no evil thing whatsoever shall have dominion over him for ever and ever chapter eighty four vignette a heron text the chapter of making the transformation into a heron the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i have gotten dominion over the beasts that are brought for sacrifice with the knives which are held at their heads and at their hair and at their hail aged ones hail coups who are provided with the opportunity the chancellor-in-chief the overseer of the palace new triumphant is upon the earth and what he hath slaughtered is in heaven and what he hath slaughtered is in heaven and he is upon the earth behold i am strong and i work mighty deeds to the very heights of heaven i have made myself pure and i make the breadth of heaven a place for my footsteps as i go into the cities of al kurt i advance and i go forward into the city of unu hermopolis i have set the gods upon their paths and i have roused up the exalted ones who dwell in their shrines do i not know nu do i not know tatunan do i not know the beings of the colour of fire who thrust forward their horns do i not know every being having incantations unto whose words i listen i am the samam bull for slaughter which is written down in the books the gods crying out say let your faces be gracious to him that cometh onward the light is beyond your knowledge and ye cannot fetter it and times and seasons are in my body i do not utter words to the god hue i do not utter words of wickedness instead of words of right and truth and each day right and truth come upon my eyebrows at night taketh place the festival of him that is dead the aged one who is in ward in the earth chapter eighty five vignette a soul text the chapter of making the transformation into a living soul and of not entering into the chamber of torture whosoever knoweth it shall not see corruption the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am the divine soul of ra proceeding from the god nu that divine soul which is god i am the creator of the divine food and that which is an abomination unto me is sin whereon i look not i proclaim right and truth and i live therein i am the divine food which is not corrupted in my name of soul i gave birth unto myself together with new in my name of capera in whom i come into being day by day i am the lord of light and that which is an abomination unto me is death let me not go into the chamber of torture which is in the tuat underworld i ascribe honour unto osiris and i make 
to be at peace the hearts of those beings who dwell among the divine things which i love they cause the fear of me to abound and they create awe of me in those beings who dwell in their divine territories behold i am exalted upon my standard and upon my seat and upon the throne which is adjudged to me i am the god new and the workers of iniquity shall not destroy me i am the first-born god of primeval matter that is to say the divine soul even the souls of the gods of everlastingness and my body is eternity my form is everlastingness and is the lord of years and the prince of eternity i am the creator of the darkness who maketh his habitation in the uttermost parts of the sky which i love and i arrive at the confines thereof i advance upon my feet i become master of my vine i sail over the sky which formeth the division betwixt heaven and earth i destroy the hidden worms that travel nigh unto my footsteps which are towards the lord of the two hands and arms my soul is the soul of the souls of everlastingness and my body is eternity i am the divine exalted being who is the lord of the land of taboo i am the boy in the city and the young man in the plain is my name he that never suffereth corruption is my name i am the soul the creator of the god new who maketh his habitation in the underworld my place of incubation is unseen and my egg is not cracked i have done away with all my iniquity and i shall see my divine father the lord of eventide whose body dwelleth in anu i travel to the god of night who dwelleth with the god of light by the western region of the ibis thoth chapter eighty six vignette a swallow perched upon a conical object text the chapter of making the transformation into a swallow the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am a swallow i am a swallow i am the scorpion the daughter of ra hail ye gods whose scent is sweet hail ye gods whose scent is sweet hail flame which cometh forth from the horizon hail thou who art in the city i have brought the warden of his bite therein o stretch out unto me thy hand so that i may be able to pass my days in the pool of double fire and let me advance with my message for i have come with words to tell o open thou the doors to me and i will declare the things which have been seen by me horus hath become the divine prince of the boat of the sun and unto him hath been given the throne of his divine father osiris and set that son of nut lieth under the fetters which he had made for me i have made a computation of what is in the city of sechem i have stretched out both my hands and arms at the word of osiris i have passed on to judgment and i have come that i may speak grant that i may pass on and declare my tidings i enter in i am judged and i come forth worthy at the gate of nebberture i am pure at the great place of the passage of souls i have done away with my sins i have put away mine offences and i have destroyed the evil which appertained unto my members upon earth hail ye divine beings who guard the doors make ye for me a way for behold i am like unto you i have come forth by day i have journeyed on on my legs i have gained the mastery over my footsteps before the god of light i know the hidden ways and the doors of the sekhet aaru verily i even i have come i have overthrown mine enemies upon earth and yet my perishable body is in the grave rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall come forth by day he shall not be turned back at any gate in the underworld and he shall make his transformation into a swallow regularly and continually chapter eighty seven vignette the serpent sata with human legs text the chapter of making the transformation into the serpent sata the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am the serpent sata whose years are many i die and i am born again each day i am the serpent sata which dwelleth in the uttermost parts of the earth i die and i am born again and i renew myself and i grow young each day chapter eighty eight vignette a crocodile upon a pylon or gateway text the chapter of making the transformation into a crocodile the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am the divine crocodile which dwelleth in his terror i am the divine crocodile and i seize my prey like a ravening beast i am the great and mighty fish which is in the city of 
kemur i am the lord to whom bowing and prostrations are made in the city of sekhem chapter eighty nine vignette the mummy of the deceased lying upon a bier above is his soul in the form of a human-headed bird holding shen the emblem of eternity in its claws text the chapter of causing the soul to be united to its body in the underworld the osiris ani triumphant saith hail thou god an eu that is bringer hail thou god Peirer, that is runner who dwellest in thy hall hail great god grant thou that my soul may come unto me from wheresoever it may be if it would tarry then let my soul be brought unto me from wheresoever it may be for thou shalt find the eye of horus standing by thee like unto those beings who are like unto osiris and who never lie down in death let not the osiris ani triumphant lie down in death among those who lie down in anu the land wherein souls are joined unto their bodies even in thousands let me have possession of my ba soul and of my ku and let me triumph therewith in every place wheresoever it may be observe these things which i speak for it hath staves with it observe then o ye divine guardians of heaven my soul wheresoever it may be if it would tarry do thou make my soul look upon my body for thou shalt find the eye of horus standing by thee like those beings who are like unto osiris hail ye gods who tow along the boat of the lord of millions of years who bring it above the underworld and who make it to travel over nut who make souls to enter into their spiritual bodies whose hands are filled with your ropes and who clutch your weapons tight destroy ye the enemy thus shall the boat of the sun be glad and the great god shall set out on his journey in peace and behold grant ye that the soul of osiris ani triumphant may come forth before the gods and that it may be triumphant along with you in the eastern part of the sky to follow unto the place where it was yesterday and that it may have peace peace and amentet may it look upon its material body may it rest upon its spiritual body and may its body neither perish nor suffer corruption for ever rubric these words are to be said over a soul of gold inlaid with precious stones and placed on the breast of osiris chapter ninety vignette a jackal walking towards the funeral mountain or the deceased standing upright in the presence of the god thoth who is about to give unto him a roll of papyrus text the chapter of driving evil recollections from the mouth the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant the son of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief amenhetep triumphant saith hail thou that cuttest off heads and slittest brows thou being who puttest away the memory of evil things from the mouth of the khus by means of the incantations which they have within them look not upon me with the same eyes with which thou lookest upon them go thou round about on thy legs and let thy face be turned behind thee so that thou mayest be able to see the divine slaughterers of the god shu who are coming up behind thee to cut off thy head and to slit thy brow by reason of the message of violence sent by thy lord and to see that which thou sayest work thou for me so that the memory of evil things shall dart from my mouth let not my head be cut off let not my brow be slit and let not my mouth be shut fast by reason of the incantations which thou hast within thee according to that which thou doest for the coups through the incantations which they have within themselves get thee back and depart at the sound of the two speeches which the goddess isis uttered when thou didst come to cast the recollection of evil things into the mouth of osiris by the will of suti his enemy saying let thy face be towards thy privy parts and look upon that face which cometh forth from the flame of the eye of horus against thee from within the eye of tem and the calamity of that night which shall consume thee and osiris went back for the abomination of thee was in him and thou didst go back for the abomination of him is in thee i have gone back for the abomination of thee is in me and thou shalt go back for the abomination of me is in thee thou wouldst come unto me but i say that thou shalt not advance to me 
so that i come to an end and i say then to the divine slaughterers of the god shu depart end of chapters eighty one through ninety chapters ninety one through one hundred of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter ninety one vignette the soul of the deceased in the form of a human-headed bird standing in front of a pylon text the chapter of not letting the soul of new triumphant be captive in the underworld he saith hail thou who art exalted hail thou who art adored o thou mighty one of souls thou divine soul thou possessor of terrible power who dost put the fear of thyself into the gods thou who art crowned upon thy throne of majesty i pray thee to make a way for the ba soul and for the ku and for the kai bit shade of the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant and let him be provided therewith i am a perfect ku and i have made my way unto the place wherein dwell ra and hathor rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall be able to transform himself into a ku provided with his soul and with his shade in the underworld and he shall never be held captive at any door in amentet in entering in or in coming out chapter ninety two vignette the soul of the deceased in the form of a human-headed bird flying out from the doorway of the tomb variant vignettes represent the deceased as having opened the door of the tomb and having his soul by his side or as standing before the open door with hands stretched out to embrace his soul an interesting vignette represents the disk of the sun with rays shooting forth from it above the tomb and the soul of the deceased hovering over his shade drawn in solid black colour which has just emerged therefrom text the chapter of opening the tomb to the soul and to the shade of osiris the scribe nebseni the lord of reverence born of the lady of the house mut restha triumphant so that he may come forth by day and have dominion over his feet he saith that which was shut fast hath been opened that is to say he that lay down in death hath been opened that which was open hath been shut to my soul through the command of the eye of horus which hath strengthened me and which maketh to stand fast the beauties which are upon the forehead of ra whose strides are long as he lifteth up his legs in journeying i have made for myself a way my members are mighty and are strong i am horus the avenger of his divine father i am he who bringeth along his divine father and who bringeth along his mother by means of his sceptre and the way shall be opened unto him who hath gotten dominion over his feet and he shall see the great god in the boat of ra when souls are counted therein at the bows and when the years also are counted up grant that the eye of horus which maketh the adornments of light to be firm upon the forehead of ra may deliver my soul for me and let there be darkness upon your faces o ye who would hold fast osiris o keep not captive my soul o keep not ward over my shade but let a way be opened for my soul and for my shade and let them see the great god in the shrine on the day of the judgment of souls and let them recite the utterances of osiris whose habitations are hidden to those who guard the members of osiris and who keep ward over the khus and who hold captive the shades of the dead who would work evil against me so that they shall not work evil against me may a way for thy double ka along with thee and along with thy soul be prepared by those who keep ward over the members of osiris and who hold captive the shades of the dead heaven shall not keep thee 
the earth shall not hold thee captive thou shalt not have thy being with the divine beings who make slaughter but thou shalt have dominion over thy legs and thou shalt advance to thy body straightway in the earth and to those who belong to the shrine and guard the members of osiris chapter ninety three vignette a buckle with human hands and arms which grasp the deceased by his left arm in the ani papyrus and in the saite recension the vignette shows the deceased standing with both hands raised in adoration before a god who is seated in a boat and who has his head turned so that his face looks backwards text the chapter of not sailing to the east in the underworld the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail phallus of ra who departest from thy calamity which ariseth through opposition the cycles have been without movement for millions of years i am stronger than the strong i am mightier than the mighty if i sail away or if i be snatched away to the east through the two horns or as others say if any evil and abominable thing be done unto me at the feast of the devils the phallus of ra shall be swallowed up along with the head of osiris and behold me for i journey along over the fields wherein the gods mow down those who make reply unto their words now verily the two horns of the god capera shall be thrust aside and verily pus shall spring into being in the eye of tem along with corruption if i be kept in restraint or if i have gone towards the east or if the feast of devils be made in my presence or if any malignant wound be inflicted upon me chapter ninety four vignette the deceased seated with a table before him on which rest an ink-pot and the palate of a scribe in the saite recension the deceased is offering an ink-pot and a palette to the god thoth text the chapter of praying for an ink-pot and for a palette the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail aged god who dost behold thy divine father and who art the guardian of the book of thoth behold i have come i am endowed with glory i am endowed with strength i am filled with might and i am supplied with the books of thoth and i have brought them to enable me to pass through the god acre who dwelleth in set i have brought the ink-pot and the palette as being the objects which are in the hands of thoth hidden is that which is in them behold me in the character of a scribe i have brought the offal of osiris and i have written thereon i have made that is copied the words of the great and beautiful god each day fairly o Herokuti, thou didst order me and i have made that is copied what is right and true and i do bring it unto thee each day chapter ninety five vignette the deceased standing before thoth with both hands raised in adoration of the god in the papyrus of usur hat which probably belongs to the period of the eighteenth dynasty the vignette is a goose but this arises from the fact that the chapter is there called the chapter of making the transformation into a goose text the chapter of being nigh unto thoth the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am he who sendeth forth terror into the powers of rain and thunder and i ward off from the great divine lady the attacks of violence i have smitten like the god shot that is the god of slaughter and i have poured out libations of cool water like the god ashu and i have worked for the great divine lady to ward off the attacks of violence i have made to flourish my knife along with the knife which is in the hand of thoth in the powers of rain and thunder chapters ninety six and ninety seven vignette to the deceased standing behind the god thoth text the chapter of being nigh unto thoth and of giving glory unto a man in the underworld the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am the god her Abmeat, that is he that is within his eye and i have come to give right and truth to ra i have made suti to be at peace with me by means of offerings made to the god acre and to the tesheru deities and by making reverence unto seb the following words are to be recited in the sectet boat 
hail sceptre of anubis i have made the four khus who are in the train of the lord of the universe to be at peace with me and i am the lord of the fields through their decree i am the divine father ba that is the god of the water flood and i do away with the thirst of him that keepeth ward over the lakes behold ye me then o great gods of majesty who dwell among the souls of anu for i am lifted up over you i am the god menk that is gracious one who dwelleth among you verily i have cleansed my soul o great god of majesty set not before me the evil obstacles which issue from thy mouth and let not destruction come round about me or upon me i have made myself clean in the lake of making to be at peace and in the lake of weighing in the balance and i have bathed myself in netert uchat which is under the holy sycamore tree of heaven behold i am bathed and i have triumphed over all mine enemies straightway who come forth and rise up against right and truth i am right and truth in the earth i even i have spoken with my mouth which is the power of the lord the only one ra the mighty who liveth upon right and truth let not injury be inflicted upon me but let me be clothed on the day of those who go forward to every good thing chapter ninety eight vignette in the theban papyri this chapter has no vignette in the saite recension the vignette represents the deceased standing with his right hand outstretched in the act of addressing a god who is seated in a boat text the chapter of bringing along a boat in heaven the chancellor-in-chief triumphant saith hail to thee o thou thigh which dwellest in the northern heaven in the great lake which art seen and which diest not i have stood up over thee when thou didst rise like a god i have seen thee and i have not lain down in death i have stood over thee and i have risen like a god i have cackled like a goose and i have alighted like the hawk by the divine clouds and by the great dew i have journeyed from the earth to heaven the god shu hath made me to stand up the god of light hath made me to be vigorous by the two sides of the ladder and the stars which never rest set me on my way and bring me away from slaughter i bring along with me the things which drive back calamities as i advance over the passage of the god pen thou comest how great art thou o god pen i have come from the pool of flame which is in the seket sasa that is the field of fire thou livest in the pool of flame in seket sasa and i live upon the staff of thy holy god hail thou god ka who dost bring those things which are in the boats by thee i stand up in the boat and i guide myself over the water i have stood up in the boat and the god hath guided me i have stood up i have spoken i am master of the crops i sail round about us as i go forward and the gates which are in sekem letopolis are opened unto me and fields are awarded unto me in the city of unu herbopolis and labours are given unto me together with those of my own flesh and bone chapter ninety nine vignette the deceased and a boatman in a boat text the chapter of bringing along a boat in the underworld the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail ye who bring along the boat over the evil back of apepi grant that i may bring the boat along and coil up its ropes in peace in peace come come hasten hasten for i have come to see my father osiris the lord of the ansi garment who hath gained the mastery with joy of heart hail lord of the rain-storm thou male thou sailor hail thou who dost sail over the evil back of apep hail thou that dost bind up heads and dost establish the bones of the neck when thou comest forth from the knives hail thou who art in charge of the hidden boat who dost fetter apep grant that i may bring along the boat and that i may coil up the ropes and that i may sail forth therein this land is baleful and the stars have overbalanced themselves and have fallen upon their faces therein and they have not found anything which will help them to ascend again their path is blocked by the tongue of ra Antebu is the guide of the two lands seb is established through their rudders the power which openeth the disk the prince of the red beings i am brought along like him that hath suffered shipwreck 
grant that my khu my brother may come to me and that i may set out for the place whereof thou knowest tell me my name saith the wood whereat i would anchor lord of the two lands who dwellest in the shrine is thy name tell me my name saith the rudder leg of hapiu is thy name tell me my name saith the rope hair with which anpu anubis finisheth the work of my embalmment is thy name tell us our name say the or rest pillars of the underworld is your name tell me my name saith the hold akar is thy name tell me my name saith the mast he who bringeth back the great lady after she hath gone away is thy name tell me my name saith the lower deck standard of apuat is thy name tell me my name saith the upper post throat of mestha is thy name tell me my name saith the sail nut is thy name tell us our name say the pieces of leather ye who are made from the hide of the menevis bull which was burned by suti is your name tell us our name say the paddles fingers of horus the firstborn is your name tell me my name saith the machabet the hand of isis which wipeth away the blood from the eye of horus is thy name tell us our names say the planks which are in its hulk mesthi hapi to amatef queb senef hakwa that is he who leadeth away captive thetem awa that is he who seizeth by violence mea antef that is he who seeth what the father bringeth and ari nef tesef that is he who made himself are your names tell us our name say the bows he who is at the head of his gnomes is your name tell me my name saith the hall mert is thy name tell me my name saith the rudder aqua that is true one is thy name o thou who shinest from the water hidden beam is thy name tell me my name saith the keel thigh or leg of isis which rock cut off with the knife to bring blood into the sectet boat is thy name tell me my name saith the sailor traveller is thy name tell me my name saith the wind by which thou art borne along the north wind which cometh from tem to the nostrils of kenti amenti is thy name tell me my name saith the river if thou wouldst travel upon me those which can be seen is thy name tell us our name save the river banks destroyer of the god iua that is he of the spacious hand in the water-house is thy name tell me my name saith the ground if thou wouldst walk upon me the nose of heaven which proceedeth from the god utu who dwelleth in the sekhet araru and who cometh forth with rejoicing therefrom is thy name then shall be recited before them these words hail to you o ye divine beings with splendid cause ye divine lords of things who exist and who live for ever and whose double period of an illimitable number of years is eternity i have made a way unto you grant ye me food and sepulchral meals for my mouth and grant that i may speak therewith and that the goddess isis may give me loaves and cakes in the presence of the great god i know the great god before whose nostrils ye place to chat thou food and his name is thekum both when he maketh his way from the eastern horizon of heaven and when he journeyeth into the western horizon of heaven may his journey be my journey and his going forth my going forth let me not be destroyed at the mesket chamber and let not the devils gain dominion over my members i have my cakes in the city of pei and i have my ale in the city of tepu and let the offerings which are given unto you be given unto me this day let my offerings be wheat and barley let my offerings be anti unguent and linen garments let my offerings be for life strength and health let my offerings be a coming forth by day in any form whatsoever in which it may please me to appear in sekhet aru rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall come forth into sekhet aru and bread and wine and cakes shall be given unto him at the altar of the great god and fields and an estate sown with wheat and barley which the followers of horus shall reap for him and he shall eat of that wheat and barley and his limbs shall be nourished therewith and his body shall be like unto the bodies of the gods and he shall come forth into sekhet aru in any form whatsoever he pleaseth and he shall appear therein regularly and continually
chapters one hundred and one hundred and twenty nine vignette a boat wherein stand the deities isis thoth capera and shu and the deceased sailing on a stream the vignette in the saite recension shows the deceased poling along a boat wherein are ra and the benu bird and in front of the boat stand the emblem of the east the god osiris and the tet that is the emblem of osiris and of stability the four short lines of text written over the boat read the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant raiseth up the tet and establisheth the buckle and he saileth with ra into any place that he pleaseth text the book of making perfect the khu and of causing him to go forth into the boat of ra along with those who are in his following the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i have brought the divine benu to the east and osiris to the city of tatu i have opened the treasure-houses of the god hop i have made clean the roads of the disc and i have drawn the god sikari along upon his sledge the mighty and divine lady hath made me strong at her hour i have praised and glorified the disc and i have united myself unto the divine apes who sing at the dawn and i am a divine being among them i have made myself a counterpart of the goddess isis and her power khu hath made me strong i have tied up the rope i have driven back apep i have made him to walk backwards ra hath stretched out to me both his hands and his mariners have not repulsed me my strength is the strength of the uchat and the strength of the uchat is my strength if the overseer of the house the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant be separated from the boat of ra then shall he that is ra be separated from the egg and from the abtu fish rubric this chapter shall be recited over the design which hath been drawn above and it shall be written upon papyrus which hath not been written upon with ink made of grains of greens a butt mixed with anti water and the papyrus shall be placed on the breast of the deceased it shall not enter into that is touch his members if this be done for any deceased person he shall go forth into the boat of ra in the course of the day every day and the god thoth shall take account of him as he cometh forth from and goeth in the course of the day every day regularly and continually into the boat of ra as a perfect coup and he shall set up the tet and shall establish the buckle and shall sail about with ra into any place he wisheth in the saite recension chapter one hundred is repeated as one hundred and twenty nine and both texts have the same vignette the rubric of chapter one hundred and twenty nine is however fuller than that of chapter one hundred and it may conveniently be divided into two parts the first of which refers to the picture which is ordered to be written upon a piece of new papyrus and the second to the chapter itself End of chapters ninety one through one hundred chapters one hundred and one through one hundred and ten of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter one hundred and one vignette in the papyrus of nu this chapter has no vignette in the saite recension the deceased is seen poling along a boat wherein are the god ra and the benu bird text the chapter of protecting the boat of ra o thou that cleavest the water as thou comest forth from the stream and dost sit upon thy place in thy boat sit thou upon thy place in thy boat as thou goest forth to thy station of yesterday and do thou join the osiris the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant the perfect khu unto thy mariners and let thy strength be his strength hail ra in thy name of ra if thou dost pass by the eye of seven cubits which hath a pupil of three cubits then verily do thou strengthen the osiris new triumphant the perfect khu and let him be among thy mariners and let thy strength be his strength hail ra in thy name of ra if thou dost pass by those who are overturned in death 
then verily do thou make the osiris nu triumphant the perfect soul to stand up upon his feet and may thy strength be his strength hail ra in thy name of ra if the hidden things of the underworld are opened unto thee and thou dost gratify the heart of the cycle of thy gods then verily do thou grant joy of heart unto the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant and let thy strength be his strength thy members o ra are established by this chapter rubric this chapter shall be recited over a bandlet of the fine linen of kings upon which it hath been written with anti which shall be laid upon the neck of the perfect khu on the day of the burial if this amulet be laid upon his neck he shall do everything which he desireth to do even like the gods and he shall join himself unto the followers of horus and he shall be established as a star face to face with septet sothis and his corruptible body shall be as a god along with his kinsfolk for ever and the goddess menket shall make plants to germinate upon his body and the majesty of the god thoth lovingly shall make the light to rest upon his corruptible body at will even as he did for the majesty of the king of the north and of the south the god osiris triumphant chapter one hundred and two vignette the boat of ra with the god seated therein and holding a paddle before him kneels the god isis and behind him the deceased sometimes ra is accompanied by the gods thoth and kapera and sometimes by anubis alone in the saite recension the deceased is kneeling before ra at the table of offerings text the chapter of going into the boat of ra the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant saith hail thou great god who art in thy boat bring thou me into thy boat i have come forward to thy steps let me be the director of thy journeyings and let me be among those who belong to thee and who are among the stars which never rest the things which are an abomination unto thee and the things which are an abomination unto me i will not eat that which is an abomination unto me that which is an abomination unto me is filth and i will not eat thereof but sepulchral offerings and holy food will i eat and i shall not be overthrown thereby i will not draw nigh unto filth with my hands and i will not walk thereon with my sandals because my bread is made of white barley and my ale is made of red barley and behold the sectet boat and the atet boat have brought these things and have laid the gifts of the lands upon the altar of the souls of anu hymns of praise be to thee o ur er as thou travellest through heaven let there be food for thee o dweller in the city of teni this and when the dogs gather together let me not suffer harm i myself have come and i have delivered the god from the things which have been inflicted upon him and from the grievous sickness of the body of the arm and of the leg i have come and i have spit upon the body i have bound up the arm and i have made the leg to walk i have entered the boat and i sail round about by the command of ra chapter one hundred and three vignette the goddess hathor having a disc and horns upon her head and a sceptre in her left hand behind her stands the deceased text the chapter of being with the goddess hathor the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i am the pure traveller behold as ahi behold as ahi let me be among those who follow the goddess hathor chapter one hundred and four vignette two great gods seated on thrones facing each other on the ground between them sits the deceased in the saite recension the deceased is seated on a low pedestal before three gods text the chapter of sitting among the great gods behold nebseni who saith i sit among the great gods and i have made a way for myself through the house of the sect 
Amentet boat and behold the mantis hath brought me to see the great gods who dwell in the underworld and i shall be triumphant before them for i am pure chapter one hundred and five vignette the deceased standing before a ka on a pedestal with his right hand he pours out a libation and with his left he makes an offering of incense text the chapter of making offerings to the ka in the underworld the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith homage to thee o my ka who art my period of life grant thou that i may come before thee and let me rise up like the sun and let me be strong and let me have my soul and let me gain the mastery over mine enemies for i have brought to thee an offering of incense and i have made myself pure therewith and i will purify that which issueth from thee therewith the evil things which i have spoken and the hateful transgressions which i have committed lay thou not upon me for i am the mother of emerald amulet which belongeth unto the neck of ra and which hath been placed there by those who dwell in the double horizon that is the eastern and western parts of the sky their vigour is my vigour their vigour is my vigour my ka is like unto their ka's and the tchafau food of my ka is like unto the tchafau food of their ka's o thou who liftest up the scales and who exaltest right and truth to the nostrils of ra this day let not my head fall away from me for behold am i not the eye which looketh upon thee am i and am i not the ear which hearkeneth unto thee for behold am i not the bull of those who have fallen down in death and have not sepulchral meals been made for me and are not those who live in the heights or according to another reading those who are chiefs of nut for me grant thou that i may go forward by thee for i even i am pure and i have made osiris to triumph over his enemies chapter one hundred and six vignette a table of offerings in the saite recension the deceased is making offerings to the god ptah text the chapter of giving sepulchral meals unto the osiris nu triumphant in het ptah ka that is memphis and the underworld the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant saith hail great god thou lord of tchafau food hail great god thou prince of the celestial habitations which supply bread for the god ptah hail mighty one who dwellest in the great house grant ye unto me bread grant ye unto me ale and let me cleanse myself by means of the haunch and by the offerings of cakes hail thou divine boat of sekhet aaru let these cakes be brought to me by thy stream even as thy divine father the mighty one passed thereon in the divine bark chapter one hundred and seven there is no equivalent for this chapter in the papyri containing the seban recension in the saite recension this chapter is called the chapter of going into and of coming out from the gate of the gods of the west of being among the followers of ra and of knowing the souls of the west and the vignette represents the deceased standing with both hands raised in adoration before ra sebek hathor and a serpent who rest on the slope of a mountain the text is actually the first line and a half of chapter one hundred and nine which is entitled the chapter of knowing the souls of the east chapter one hundred and eight vignette the deities temu sebek and hathor seated text the chapter of knowing the souls of the west the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith now the mountain of bacau that is the mountain of the sunrise whereupon this heaven supports itself is situated in the eastern part of heaven and it hath dimensions of three hundred ket that is thirty thousand cubits in length and one hundred and fifty khat that is one hundred and fifty thousand cubits in breadth sebek the lord of bacau dwelleth 
to the east of the mountain and his temple is on the earth there there is a serpent on the brow of that mountain and he measureth thirty cubits in length the first eight cubits of his length are covered with flints and with shining metal plates the osiris nu triumphant knoweth the name of this serpent which dwelleth on his hill dweller in his fire is his name now after ra hath stood still he inclineth his eyes towards him and a stoppage of the boat of ra taketh place and a mighty sleep cometh upon him that is in the boat and he gulpeth down seven cubits of the great waters thereby he maketh suddy to depart having the harpoon of iron in him and thereby he is caused to throw up everything which he hath eaten and thereby is set put into his place of restraint and then i recite before him the enchantment saying get thee back to the sky for that which is in my hand is ready i stand up in thy place of restraint the boat advanceth taking heed to the way thy head is covered up while i sail on and turn back thy steps i am the man who covereth thy head and who poureth cold water upon thy palm i have strength and i am strong i am the divine one who is mighty in enchantments namely the son of nut and my splendour hath therefore been delivered unto me who then is this venerable khu who advanceth walking upon his belly and upon his tail and upon the joints of his back verily it is i myself who do walk over thee and thy strength is in my power i am he who lifteth up strength and i have come and i have become master of the serpents of ra when he setteth in my sight at eventide i go round about heaven but thou art fettered with fetters which thing was ordained for thee formerly when ra set in life in his horizon i even i know how to guide the matters whereby the serpent apep is driven back and i know the divine souls of the west that is to say tem and sebek the lord of bacow and hathor the lady of the evening chapter one hundred and nine vignette the god heru kuti harmarchus seated before him is a spotted calf behind which stands the deceased with both hands raised in adoration of the god above is the morning star elsewhere the deceased is seen standing with both hands raised in adoration before three seated ibis-headed deities in the saite recension the vignette is quite different the god ra hamarchus hawk-headed and wearing a disc which is encircled by a serpent is seated in a boat above the disc is the emblem of air and he holds on his knees the emblem of life before him in the boat is a calf above which is a star and behind him stands the deceased the boat is about to sail between two sycamore trees in front of which stands the deceased with both hands raised in adoration text the chapter of knowing the souls of the east the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith i even i know the eastern gate of heaven now its southern part is at the lake of karu and its northern part is at the canal of the geese where out ra cometh with winds which make him to advance i am he who is concerned with the tackle which is in the divine bark i am the sailor who ceaseth not in the boat of ra i even i know the two sycamores of turquoise between which ra showeth himself when he strideth forward over the supports of shu towards the gate of the lord of the east through which ra cometh forth i even i know the sectet aaru of ra the walls of which are of iron the height of the wheat therein is five cubits of the ears thereof two cubits and of the stalks thereof three cubits the barley therein is in height seven cubits the ears thereof are three cubits and the stalks thereof are four cubits and behold the coos each one of whom therein is nine cubits in height reap it near the divine souls of the east i even i know the divine souls of the east that is to say heru kuti hamarchus and the calf of the goddess kera and the morning star daily a divine city hath been built for me i know it and i know the name thereof second aaru is its name chapter one hundred and ten vignette the second hetepet 
or fields of peace commonly called the elysian fields surrounded and intersected by streams the divisions contain the following a nebseni the scribe and artist of the temple of ptah with his arms hanging by his sides entering the elysian fields b the scribe nebseni making an offering of incense to the great company of the gods c nebseni seated in a boat paddling above the boat are three symbols for city d the deceased addressing a bearded mummied figure e three pools or lakes called erti hetep and Ketket, respectively f nebseni reaping in sekhet hetepet g nebseni grasping the benu bird which is perched upon a stand in front or three kas and three khus h nebseni seated and smelling a flower the text reads thousands of all good and pure things to the ka of nebseni i a table of offerings j four pools of lakes called nebt tau e u aka ka and hetep k nebseni ploughing with oxen by the side of a stream which is one thousand measures in length and the width of which cannot be said in it there are neither fish nor worms l nebseni ploughing with oxen on an island the length of which is the length of heaven m a division shaped like a bowl in which is inscribed the birthplace of the god of the city ken kenet nebt n an island whereon are four gods and a flight of steps the legend reads the great company of the gods who are in sekhet hetep o the boat tetchetet with eight oars four at the bows and four at the stern floating at the end of a canal in it is a flight of steps the place where it lies is called the domain of neph p two pools the names of which are illegible the vignette in the papyrus of ani has some interesting variants and may be thus described one ani making an offering before a hare-headed god a snake-headed god and a bull-headed god behind him stands thoth holding his reed and palette ani paddling a boat ani addressing a hawk before which are a table of offerings three ovals and the legend being a peace in the field of peace and having air for the nostrils two ani reaping corn ani driving the oxen which tread out the corn ani addressing or adoring a benu bird perched on a stand ani seated holding the kerp sceptre a heap of red and a heap of white corn three kas and three khus which are perhaps to be read the food of the khus and three pools three ani ploughing a field near a stream which contains neither fish nor serpents for the birthplace of the god of the city an island on which is a flight of steps a region called the place of the khus who are seven cubits high the wheat is three cubits high and it is the sahu who have become perfect who reap it the region ashet the god who dwelleth therein being unifer a boat with eight oars lying at the end of a canal and a boat floating on a canal the name of the first boat is the hutu techesser and the name of the second techefau in the papyrus of nebseni are two scenes one on each side of sekhet hetepep or the elysian fields in the first a nebseni stands with both hands raised in adoration and adores the company of the gods who dwell in sekhet hetep saying homage to you o ye lords of food i have come in peace to your field to receive tichifau food grant ye that i may come to the great god daily and grant that i may attain to the offerings that is to say to the cakes and ale and oxen and ducks and bread which are offered unto his ka the three short lines of hieroglyphics be in front of nebseni read nebseni the lord of reverence the scribe and artist in the temples of the south and of the north ascribeth praise to the company of the gods and adoreth the great god in the second scene nebseni is standing upright and a youth is pouring a libation over him at the same time another youth is bringing to him an offering of raiment the text above him c reads may the god osiris and all the company of the gods who dwell in sekhet hetep grant offerings of cakes and ale and oxen and ducks and bread and all good things and linen garments and incense each day and an offering on the altar each day and the receiving of cakes of various kinds and milk and wine and tichafau food and the following of the god at his coming forth during his festivals of rastau along with the favoured ones of the great god to the ka of the scribe nebseni etc text 
here begin the chapters of sekhet hetepet and the chapters of coming forth by day of going into and of coming out from the underworld of coming to sekhet aaru of being in sekhet hetepet the mighty land the lady of winds of having power there of becoming a ku there of ploughing there of reaping there of eating there of drinking there of making love there and of doing everything even as a man doeth upon earth behold the scribe and artist of the temple of ptah nebseni who saith set hath taken possession of horus who looked with the two eyes upon the building round seket hetep but i have unfettered horus and taken him from set and set hath opened the ways of the two eyes which are in heaven set hath cast his moisture to the winds upon the soul that hath his day or his eye and who dwelleth in the city of mert and he hath delivered the interior of the body of horus from the gods of akert behold me now for i make this mighty boat to travel over the lake of hetep and i brought it away with might from the palace of shu the domain of his stars groweth young and reneweth its former strength i have brought the boat into the lakes thereof so that i may come forth into the cities thereof and i have sailed into their divine city hetep and behold it is because i even i am at peace with his seasons and with his guidance and with his territory and with the company of the gods who are his firstborn he maketh the two divine fighters that is horus and set to be at peace with those who watch over the living ones whom he hath created in fair form and he bringeth peace with him he maketh the two divine fighters to be at peace with those who watch over them he cutteth off the hair from the divine fighters he driveth away storm from the helpless and he keepeth away harm from the coups let me gain dominion within the, that field for i know it and i have sailed among its lakes so that i might come into its cities my mouth is strong and i am equipped with weapons to use against the coups let them not have dominion over me let me be rewarded with thy fields o thou god hetep that which is thy wish shalt thou do o lord of the winds may i become a ku therein may i eat therein may i drink therein may i plough therein may i reap therein may i fight therein may i make love therein may my words be mighty therein may i never be in a state of servitude therein but may i be in authority therein thou hast made strong the mouth and the throat of the god hetep ketebu is its name he is established upon the watery supports of the god shu and is linked unto the pleasant things of ra he is the divider of years he is hidden of mouth his mouth is silent that which he uttereth is secret he fulfilleth eternity and taketh possession of everlastingness of existence as hetep the lord hetep the god horus maketh himself to be strong like unto the hawk which is one thousand cubits in length and two thousand cubits in width in life he hath equipments with him and he journeyeth on and cometh where the seat of his heart wisheth in the pools thereof and in the cities thereof he was begotten in the birth chamber of the god of the city he hath offerings made unto him of the food of the god of the city he performeth that which it is meet to do therein and the union thereof in the matter of everything of the birth chamber of the divine city when he setteth in life like crystal he performeth everything therein and these things are like unto the things which are done in the lake of double fire wherein there is none that rejoiceth and wherein are all manner of evil things the god hetep goeth in and cometh out and goeth backwards in that field which gathereth together all manner of things for the birth chamber of the god of the city when he setteth in life like crystal he performeth all manner of things therein which are like unto the things which are done in the lake of double fire wherein there is none that rejoiceth and wherein are no evil things whatsoever let me live with the god hetep clothed and not despoiled by the lords of the north and may the lords of divine things bring food unto me may he make me to go forward and may i come forth and may he bring my power to me there and may i receive it and may my equipment be from the god hetep may i gain the mastery over the great and mighty word which is in my body in this my place and by it i will remember and i will forget let me go forward on my journey and let me plough i am at peace in the divine city and i know the waters cities gnomes and lakes which are in sekhet hetep i exist here therein i am strong therein i become a ku therein 
i eat therein i sow seed therein i reap the harvest therein i plough therein i make love therein i am at peace with the god hetep therein behold i scatter seed therein i sail about among its lakes and i come forward to the cities thereof o divine hetep behold my mouth is equipped with my horns for teeth grant me an overflowing supply of the food whereon the cause and khus live i have passed the judgment of shu upon him that knoweth him so that i may go forth to the cities thereof and may sail about among its lakes and may walk about in sekhet hetep and behold ra is in heaven and behold the god hetep is its double offering i have come onward to its land i have put on my girdle i have come forth so that the gifts which are about to be given unto me may be given i have made gladness for myself i have laid hold upon my strength which the god hetep hath greatly increased for me o anen em hetep i have entered into thee and my soul followeth after me and my divine food is upon both my hands o lady of the two lands who establishest my word whereby i remember and forget i would live without injury without any injury being done unto me o grant to me o do thou grant to me joy of heart make thou me to be at peace bind thou up my sinews and muscles and make me to receive the air o anen en hetep thou lady of the winds i have entered in to thee and i have opened that is shown my head ra falleth asleep but i am awake and there is the goddess hast at the gate of heaven by night obstacles have been set before me but i have gathered together what he hath emitted i am in my city o nut ert i have entered into into thee and i have counted my harvest and i go forward to uak i am the bull enveloped in turquoise the lord of the field of the bull the lord of the divine speech of the goddess septet sothis at her hours o uak i have entered into thee i have eaten my bread i have gotten the mastery over choice pieces of the flesh of oxen and of feathered fowl and the birds of shu have been given unto me i follow after the gods and i come after the divine cause o tchet bet i have entered into thee i array myself in apparel and i gird myself with the saw garment of ra now behold he is in heaven and those who dwell therein follow ra and i follow ra in heaven o unan em hetep lord of the two lands i have entered into thee and i have plunged into the lakes of teshetzert behold me for all filth hath departed from me the great god groweth therein and behold i have found food therein i have snared feathered fowl and i feed upon the finest of them o ken kentet i have entered into thee and i have seen the osiris my father and i have gazed upon my mother and i have made love i have caught the worms and serpents and i am delivered and i know the name of the god who is opposite to the goddess teshetzert and who hath straight hair and is equipped with two horns he reapeth and i both plough and reap o hast i have entered into thee i have driven back those who would come to the turquoise sky and i have followed the winds of the company of the gods the great god hath given my head unto me and he who hath bound on me my head is the mighty one who hath turquoise eyes namely ari on abet that is he doeth as he pleaseth o usert i have come into thee at the head of the house wherein divine food is brought for me o smam i have come into thee my heart watcheth my head is equipped with the white crown i am led into celestial regions and i make to flourish terrestrial objects and there is joy of heart for the bull and for celestial beings and for the company of the gods i am the god who is the bull the lord of the gods as he goeth forth from the turquoise sky o divine gnome of weed and barley i have come into thee i have come forward to thee and i have taken up that which followeth me namely the best of the libations of the company of the gods i have tied up my boat in the celestial lakes i have lifted up the post at which to anchor i have recited the prescribed words with my voice and i have ascribed praises unto the gods who dwell in sekhet hetep End of chapters one hundred and one through one hundred and ten